You have made the choice to live in his presence, to dwell not just with him, but in him. No evil shall be allowed. What's up? Good morning, guys. It's me, Emily. Today is Sunday, and I'm taking you guys to church with me once again. I have been filming, like, a couple videos about where I've been going to church and different churches that I'm trying out here in Westchester, and I'm really excited. You guys just watch me get ready, and I'm about to head out right now. It's about 10.30, and service starts at 11 a.m. I'm going to this church today called... It's about a five minute drive this time. Last week, I, or two weeks ago, I only had a three minute walk, but this week it's five minute drive. So I'm gonna drive over there. I'm a little bit nervous because it's definitely more of like a contemporary, young people, like very developed um, kind of church. Um, so I'm excited to try it out and I am happy that you guys are along for the ride. Hey guys, I am sorry that the original video of me doing a recap on this church and my visit to this church did not work out. There was no audio in case, I don't know if I inserted a clip or not, but I had a bunch of clips from inside the church, a bunch of clips from afterwards when I was going to get coffee, and of course like a whole debrief session and none of it had audio. But the next day I recorded a vlog and all of that had audio. So it was like a really random, weird, freak thing. But I thought I would just record like kind of a shorter version for you guys on this church. And you'll notice I'm not going to say the name of the church because I don't want any of my comments to be taken as like bashing or blaming or shaming or whatever you want to call it. I just want to candidly share my experience without feeling like I'm bad talking like um, someone's place of worship. So... If you know this church, then you know, but if you don't know, then um, I'm just going to speak freely without actually using the name of the church. So trying to be a little bit excellent. Just to give you guys the rundown of the church service, it started at 11 a.m. and it ended around 1130. There were hundreds of people, like there was lots and lots of people. Um, it was very like um, organized very well put together very um almost theatric 
in a way, if you can understand what I mean by that. Um, definitely a huge, huge young population, like had to be 50% young parents and um, college students, like it just had to be. And then there were a couple old heads here and there. No, I'm joking. But really, that's pretty much how it was. Like the dynamic was very, very young. They definitely had the atmosphere all set up. At least you guys could see that, like the purple lights and the blue lights and like the worship team was also very young. Like everything was just so good looking. And this is not to say that there's anything wrong with those things. Like the church that I go to, like my youth group, like we have lights and a lot of the people on our worship team are young and like there's nothing wrong with that. But I had a couple of issues with the church and like, I mean, I don't know the church like that, but I had a couple of issues with like um, some things that I saw at the church that like really bothered me and didn't align with like the way that I've grown up learning to worship and serve the Lord on a Sunday morning. The first issue that I had was worship. So the worship team was great and they sounded great. They had a guest worship leader come and she was leading the worship team and she sang her original songs. And I think that that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, making music for Jesus and, you know, singing it in worship. But I almost feel that like for a Sunday morning setting, like not necessarily traditional music, but like throw in some hymns, like throw in like the classics, throw in some Hillsong. And it's not like, oh, because those songs are name brands are better. It's more of a sense of everybody um, in this room knows this song and knows this mode of worship to Jesus. And it's it brings a sense of community rather than you just singing your own songs and nobody knows the words and nobody singing along. Now, I know that this can be a little controversial because sometimes worship leaders will introduce like new songs, new worship songs that they've been practicing and that they um, want to sing, but it just almost felt, felt like, it almost felt disengaging. I think that's a good way to put it is that it's like, I'm gonna sing the song that I wrote and like, this is why I wrote it. But it's also like, okay, but where's that communal worship? Where's that that song that everybody can jump in and sing in a loud voice and really give praise to the Lord? Like those regular old school um, hymns that just never lose its power. Literally so funny that I just said that because the song I'm thinking of in my head is, Oh, the blood of Jesus. It will never lose its power. Like stuff like that is so powerful. And I understand that like people wrote those songs. So it's not wrong for Christians to write songs obviously but I just feel like on a Sunday morning in a worship setting like like we need to all come together in corporate worship and we need to be able to you know just worship the Lord like the whole set shouldn't be your original songs I only heard one song that I knew in the first like beginning worship set and it was only like a chorus so I was like oh man like I was just getting into it so that was a little bit disappointing but the service went on. After the worship, there was the preaching. I would definitely say that the word felt a lot more like a TED talk than like a sermon. And again, there's really nothing wrong with uh, conveying the word of God differently. Like I'm not expecting someone to jump and shout and scream the word of God at me and like everybody's all hype. And I'm also not expecting like, you know, a lecture. But um, there's nothing wrong with like how differently people um, convey the word of God. But it almost felt like the pastor wanted me to like him like obviously not me but like you know it's almost like you know like people that try like extra hard to like tell jokes that aren't really funny or just like get a laugh from the crowd that's how I felt and I felt like oh I'm not really feeling that and you know I don't mind like people who are funny but it's almost like it felt so theatric and so rehearsed and so um disingenuine that I just like I wasn't clicking with the word and you know the word was good he talked about um actually it was a preacher and his wife they preached together sitting on stools and they were talking about forgiveness they had like a whiteboard and everything and they like wrote out the steps to forgiveness um based on Joseph's story and I thought it was pretty impactful like I, I think that the word was sound like it was good and it just talked about how like um 
forgiveness isn't for the other person it's for us and like we need to be set free from that and if we choose not to forgive we're choosing to stay in bondage so the word was good but what I did notice about the word was that like when you're talking about forgiveness like you got you got to get into the nitty gritty like you got to get into what the word says about forgiveness and the bible says that if you don't forgive others then God won't forgive you and you will not spend eternity in heaven and I think it was almost alarming that like I don't think it was done purposefully but that that information was omitted almost and it wasn't a lie but it also wasn't bringing that aspect of forgiveness into the discussion or the conversation or whatever you want to call it um and I just felt like because that's what I was thinking the whole time I thought we were going to get to that like it's not just unforgiveness doesn't just leave you in bondage unforgiveness literally bars you from God's forgiveness and that is such a big part of humans and forgiveness and stuff like that that's like the, the whole thing because Jesus sacrificed his son for us if we can't sacrifice our emotions for others and and be willing to overlook offenses then God is not going to overlook our offenses towards him so that wasn't talked about and that was almost like unsettling for me because it's easy to hear it's it's almost like an easy hard truth like the easy hard truth is if you don't forgive others and then you know you're in bondage and like it's like drinking poison expecting the other person to die yeah it's true and it's a hard truth but at the same time the hard truth is that if you don't forgive others you are going to die and go to hell like and it, it's not even like oh I want to be so controversial I want to make people not like me but it's like that is the word of God and if you're talking about forgiveness then you need to you need to put that in there because God said it like it's not like some little like oh yeah some people debate it like it it's a truth and it's a big deal if you choose not to forgive others then then God will literally not forgive you and and you will be living under the bondage of unforgiveness and sin so that was a little difficult for me to wrap my head around um it was almost like excess charisma and I just wasn't a huge fan of that and I think the biggest thing that I had a problem with guys and I again I really did not want to make this video to like shame a church or to shame you know how certain people worship because I know that everybody's different everybody grew up differently but the thing that I could not do was the coffee I couldn't do it so I know that some churches like will allow food and drinks into the sanctuary sanctuary um like I get that like you know like a little Starbies or Dunkin or whatever cup you want to bring in but I mean people were coming in 15 minutes late to praise and worship praise and worship sorry <laughs> I gotta stop doing that people were coming in 10 to 15 minutes late to worship with a mug of coffee in their hand like here's my coffee People were coming in like this. Jesus. Praise him. Like with a, a mug. And the thing is that they weren't bringing their mugs from home. They were making their coffee in like a back room. I saw like hordes of people coming out at the same time. They were making their coffee in a back room and then they came in late while the worship team had already started singing. So, like I saw one person, I was like, oh, that's funny. Like they literally have a mug of coffee. And then I saw more people and I saw like the rest of the church family come in. So it was only half full at 11 o'clock when I got there, like I was on time. And then 11, 10, 11, 15, 11, 30, people started rolling in with coffee. And I just think the biggest problem that I had with this church was lack of reverence for the holy spirit like come on dude i honestly don't even want to get started on this because i could probably talk about it for a very long time but where is your reverence for god and where is your reverence for the house of god like at this point i feel like you might as well just bring your couch from home and kick up your feet and watch the worship team like it's a show like you can get your coffee before church or you can get your coffee after church you have an hour and a half one and a half hours to two hours to just focus in on the lord and that is a week two hours a week to just focus on the lord and you need a mug of coffee with you why you can't stay awake for, for church for the house of god but you can stay awake through a movie i just i couldn't believe it and that was the thing that made me feel like I don't think I'm ever going to come back here. I don't want to say never because I don't know, but I actually do know. I'm not going back. That's 
not the kind of place that I want to be. That's not the kind of spirit I want to develop towards the Lord and towards his house. Like, I grew up, like, no food in the sanctuary, no drinks in the sanctuary. You're not kicking your feet up. You know, you're not going to the bathroom a bunch of times. Like, you reverence God and you reverence his presence. Even if you don't like the song, even if the song is too old for 2022, even if there's more old people than young people, you reverence the house of God and you treat it with respect. And I felt like that was really lacking. And I understand for some people that's just their culture and that's just how it is. But that's not the kind of church that I want to plant myself into. Not that their doctrine was unsound. Not that they weren't preaching the word of God. But the environment was not for me. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm at a concert. I just want to feel like I'm going somewhere to worship the Lord with all my heart and just be free in his presence and not feel like, like confused or you know what I mean like I just I felt like I was so out of place and I'm not saying this to be like religious or like have a bunch of rules and stuff like that people were coming in talking loudly like joking like having conversations I'm just like oh. like I just felt so disheartened by it so overall like the experience wasn't awful but I will say that I left very quickly and I did not wait until service was over and because I left so fast I also left my precious notebook at the church and I'm very sad about it um AJ said I should go back and get it but I don't think I am I think I'm actually just gonna take an L but I'm really sad that I left it there I took some good notes that were only like a page or so but um I'm really sad that I left it there but yeah, that's how the experience went. I'm sorry that this wasn't much of like a church notes type of deal. It was more like a event session. But I hope you guys got something. I hope you enjoyed at least the first five minutes of the vlog. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video altogether. I love you all so much, but God loves you more. And I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.